So uh, your your education system has a framework, right? Can you talk about that framework and just kind of break it down a little bit uh, for people who are watching? Got you. Okay, so the framework is basically like this. I've noticed that for the most part, every PCB design course and book I've ever read mm -hmm. is really good. Okay. It's good. It has the information and everything. The physics doesn't change. Only problem is right. it takes long to execute on. Right. And you're going to average three to five years to get really good and be able to do confidently build your own high speed boards. Right. Maybe two. It just depends on how much hours. That That's on average how long it takes. What I decided to do was reverse engineer the process using my own techniques that I do uh, or use. Um, so I'll break down the framework. I come to find that through learning different learning, like learning about different learning methods. Right. There's this book called Ultra Learning. Mm -hmm. Scott Young did an analysis on natural ultra learners. Mm -hmm. And then he developed this process that he said, these nine things that they all use. I noticed that those nine things are things that I already did from a young age. So I'm an ultra learner. So I'm like, okay, cool. I found that there is this method, I, I call it for now, the understanding method or the root the root cause method to learning. Sure. sure. And that's what I use to shortcut the process of learning and acing the fundamentals of engineering exam the first time. So I study for 30 minutes. Usually one studies for about six months, three months to prepare for it. I'm, I'm kind of lazy and procrastinate, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. But I at, at least I had this gift, I, I, in a sense, to be able to do both the FE and pass it and the specifics on the E the first time. I said, okay, what if we combine ultra learning, some elements of ultra learning, plus this understanding root cause method into some frameworks and everything. I tested these things out and came to this conclusion. If we do domain-based learning plus space repetition method, plus some key things in the ultra learning methods, plus my understanding method, plus project development and application to execute on each domain learn, this will create a layered experience that will supercharge the learning process, okay? Specifically now, the process is this. Initial exposure to the software tool and the PCB design process, okay? No notes, you just run through it. It's to expose oneself to the process. You're not going to remember much of anything the first right, time around. Right. That's intentional. It's so to get the brain used to the new experience. It's because the brain's used to that new experience, they're not, you're not going to pick up necessarily all details. You need to get re-exposed in a second project. So now your brain's overcoming the overwhelm of the new thing. You do a more in-depth project. This is also taking, uh, capitalizing on the concept of flow, making projects progressively harder. So we make a longer project that focuses on design for manufacturing and embeds the PCB learning process that you would use for industry at this point. The first project, not so industry standard, normal process, not IPC. Second process, IPC, industry process, plus design for manufacturing. And only focusing on that. Skip signal integrity, skip component selection, nothing. They focus on that. They learn how to get a board out to Sierra circuits, which we teach in the course. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. I appreciate that. For a first time pass uh, design. And that's what the students, that's what I teach the students at Rochester Institute of Technology and to my students uh, in the second module. The third module, we focus on understanding all the root cause, the root nine problems of signal integrity and how to solve them. Then we do exercises to solve each specific one. And then they do a the third project focusing only on signal integrity on a 10 layer PCB. No, forget manufacturing, for component selection, none of that stuff. We don't care about it. Right. The fourth project, they learn high-speed digital design. Oh, by the way, we're using Sierra Circuit's high-speed design guides and signal <laughs> integrity guides and the DFM guides. I mean, just pick them up. It's in my recent video. Okay? Uh, excellent guides, by the way. Thank you for that. Yeah. It really puts down, without having to read a 300-page book, the essentials that you need. So we teach the theory from that, and then we help them do a USB board project six layer that incorporates all the high speed aspects right signal integrity is baked into that we forget about dfm right the fifth project they do a power electronics project so now they can understand pdn analysis right because they have their signal 
integrity and high speed information. And then they can do that board. And then finally, their sixth project as of right now is a, compl a more complex DDR3 board, moderately complex intermediate, where they now need to incorporate component selection and everything they learned prior. By this time, they don't know how they got the confidence to design this board, but now they just have it because of the domain learning process. I call this the mesh method to PCB design, designing for manufacturing, electromagnetism, signal integrity, high-speed digital design.